Hey, we're making some new war bell sizes and just machining up the patterns. This is for a 75 pound war bell. And this is what a finished pattern looks like. So you can see I've got, this is a urethane, um, a special urethane that we machine our patterns out of. This pattern will mount on some production boards, put in some boxes, and then we'll run them over at the foundry to make the actual war bell casting. So this is half of the pattern, and then this is the drag half, which is the bottom, makes the bottom mold, and then we'll, there'll be another half that'll be the cope, which makes the other side of the, the top part of the mold that we'll make in the foundry. And so I've got urethane mounted just on a fixture board. I've gotta set this up again with a new piece. We're gonna make a four-arm pattern. So there's gonna be four of these patterns mounted in one box. So every time we run a mold in the foundry and pour iron into that mold, we get four 75-pound war bells. So that'll be 300 pounds of cast, uh, finished cast weight, It'll be a good pour. And so I'm gonna switch this over, set it up and get it cutting again so we can keep making patterns. So this is a, this is a chunk of two inch solid foundry board urethane. This is what we machine our patterns out of that we're gonna use to make the war belt castings. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up and I just need to drill and tap some holes in this so I can hold it to the fixture, which we're gonna machine the, the part out on. Put it in the vise. I've already got everything dialed in, set up. Use a little square for setting my distance just off of the edge of the vise. It's all about speed. Time is money. It's all about speed. So once I have once I have coordinates dialed in, the vice, this face, so the vice is fixed, or the height is fixed by the vice. And so all I need to do is get my X axis um, centered into what into what I had already edge found and dialed in the center of this part. Once I did that on the first one, I just use a speed square, get it close enough. I've got a little bit of room because I've got some extra material here. So if I'm within, you know, a 32nd or a 16th, plenty good. And so now we're all set. I'm going to pull up the program that's going to drill and tap this part. Find a program here. So I got a mounting program already set up with all the hole patterns to drill and tap this. And I need to change out my tool because I've got an edge finder in where I put my drill. So I need to swap that out. So I'm going to MDI M06. M06 is a tool change command. And I'm going to pull up tool 7. Tool 7 is where I need to throw my drill bit back in. So I'm going to M06 T7. Throwing the drill bit in. Quick change. No problem. Find our program. Now it's just going to run the drill tap cycle. Going to drill a bunch of holes. Then we'll switch to tool 8. Tool 8 is my tap, quarter 20 tap. Tap all these holes, and then I'm going to throw it up on the fixture. And we'll get it cutting again to make another pad. The reason I have the small 
called the wall compressor running is because I'm going to run this machine lights out all night. And so I don't need to have my 50 horse screw compressor fueling this 34,000 square foot shop with air when all I'm doing is running one machine. So I'm going to run one machine with this little Dewalt small compressor and not be having wasted air because air and air leaks, air running, big screw compressor, all that costs money. If you want to make money, you got to think about costs. And so we do things like that. Think about efficiency. And so that's why we got the little Dewalt running in the background, just pumping away the little piston pump. It's a little bit noisy. It's the only bad thing about that tank. So on the back of this fixture board, you can see I've got coordinates wrote down. These coordinates represent my G54, which is the part position in this machine. So the machine knows where the center of all of the, the machining coordinates are. That's a G54. So I've got this fixture, which does all three sizes of war bells. It does the 55, the 35 and the 75. And so that's why I need to write the coordinates down because each war bell has a different position on this board. And I've got a spot marked here on the fixture board with Sharpie so I know where to line it up in the vise just to get close. I want to make sure that's all the way down, nice and solid. Get it tightened up. Now I have to switch back. I got to put my edge finder back in because everything, the vise is locating my Z. My Z is my height. The height of this part is my Z axis. That's located by, by my position in the vise. The Y, which is fore and aft on the machine, is located also by the vise because the back jaw, this back jaw behind the vise is fixed, it's stationary. So my Z and Y are already located. I have to dial in edge find to find my X axis because the X, as you can see when I put this in, is variable at this point. So now I gotta put my edge finder back in. I'm gonna go back to MDI and I'm going to M06 tool change T7 tool 7 and I need to throw in my edge finder. My edge finder is see how this this little bad boy moves? So this thing will spin off centric once I get to the edge it will actually center up, be concentric, and then it will it will actually jump over when it's when it's uh, perfectly on the edge. So I'm going to manually run this over because I need to edge find off of this edge of the board. Once I find that edge the center of my part I have marked by my coordinate. So now I'm going to edge find off of this edge which I know from my coordinates which I have marked on the fixture is 19 inches from this edge to the center of my part. The center, center of my part is where the machine where that machine is going to design all of the program from. So to edge find this I'm going to fire up the machine MDI I'm going to do M03S1100. M03 is, is counterclockwise, spindle, speed, 1100 RPM. Fired up spindle. Now I'm just going to touch off and I'm going to bring this in until it's really close. And I'm going to move to 10 thousandths of an inch, right there. So right there is my, is my zero. So I'm going to go into my machine offsets. I'm going to go on my X axis. I'm going to part zero set. 
then I offset it by 19.1 and I've already punched these coordinates in 19.1 because my edge finder is 200 thousandths diameter half of 200 which gets us to the center of the edge finder is 100 thousandths point one so I'm off by point one on my edge so I have to add point one to get to the center of my edge finder as an offset and then 19 inches that takes me to the center of this part so now it's set up now we're ready to go and we're ready to start cutting so I'm going to go back into my memory my program find my program We're ready to run. Cycle start. So now this is going to machine this solid block of urethane into one of these things. So when this is all done, this is going to machine for roughly, roughly 10 hours. It'll take 10 hours to machine from this solid block of 2 inch urethane and when we're finished, we've got a, a pattern for the war belt, 75 pound pattern. On the back side you can see the holes that we drilled and tapped to locate it. That's the finished part.